Hello everyone, System Chalk here with the 25th episode of our YouTube run through Book of Hours. Uh, now there have been a few updates to the game, and uh, as usual, it's a mon this is the Monday episode, so I'm going to need to get uh, acquainted with the playthrough again. And then on top of that, this is more housekeeping for the channel overall. Uh, I have noticed that I am really struggling to get enough time to just do everything, like to record all of the videos. What's been happening for the last couple of weeks is that I record the Book of Hours uh, sessions in sort of two groups. That'll probably happen this week as well, although usually they're close enough together I can remember what I was up to. But this does mean that some of the stuff that I've set aside, which I think most of you may not necessarily be that interested in, but uh, there have been a few things that I've been recording in addition to the Cult of Simulator and Book of Hours stuff, which unfortunately I've just had to put on hold to make sure that I can cover these. So with that in mind, I am actually on a bit of a tight timeline for this video. Uh, I may need to actually just end it kind of abruptly, and I apologize in advance for that, but I will not take any more of your time in introduction. <clears throat> yeah, as I mentioned, we do have the, um, the new... Bancroft update. So some of these are going to be quite obvious. If I uh, mouse over the blockaded stairs, someone has filled these stairs with blocks of timber and broken furniture. They filled the timber and furniture with signs to bring shadow and despair. Do they want to prevent an intruder from passing or a resident from leaving? Either way, it'll be difficult and careful work to open the stairs. So uh, that's one improvement. The other one is the big one in terms of crafting all of the recipes. Now, I'm a little bit like those, um, anybody who's been playing something for a long time just doesn't like change, so I'm still getting used to the uh, the recipes being available, but I'm sure it'll be something that I appreciate uh, later on. <clears throat> but anyways, for those of you who are the proud owners of Book of Hours, you're probably familiar with this. Some of you may have even been playing it on the beta branch, but I don't like doing beta versions of things on broadcasts if I can avoid it, unless it's the intention of it, because, um, because the... Uh, you know, it, it's just nice to show the game the best the best it can. So I'm still not 100% sure where I'm at, but I suspect I will... I'll learn a bit more as I keep reading the books. I'm a little curious why I decided to read through the night here. Uh, oh, this is a new one. Erd... Uh, Rokas? An anonymous confessional account of, an uns of unsanctioned activities by the nuns of St. Brendan's. The title is a Hennevec phrase that might be translated as The Spirit Flees the Shadowed Places. Now, I believe we do have this. It's a tricky one. It's a ten-scale text, but it is one that we can read. You'll also notice the tantras are very, very small now. Um, Okay, well, we, uh, we're sick, so we'll use this productively. Catalog a baronial period book. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's baronial period, roughly the 1500s to 1700s. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. Books from this period are only rarely contaminated. Okay, sunny day, and we are considering... Okay, we're moving up uh, Sacralimea. So I'm sure probably if I look back on the video, I probably wound up um, <clears throat> getting everything done too late. But it's not a huge hardship to have two elements of the soul uh, tied up. Now, I do still want to boost uh, sea stories. So did I have this in the first place? Acquire sea stories. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. And that's a grail or moon. So uh, Arab or Trist. Actually, fe no, Fed is moth. So Arab or Trist will take us through. I suppose I should make a decision as to whether or not I want to bring Mrs. Kill in. So if I do that, then the Trist is accounted for for the day. Um, I think that's probably still the right call, though. Speaking with Ms. Mrs. Kill, Mrs. Kill's mood always improves when I drop by. If I don't choose a topic, Mrs. Kill will offer help as a friend. Okay, the shadow in the stair. Ernestine Peterhans records her conversations with the little darkness in Hush House's stair Tenebris, which she calls 
Donkerling. And I believe we know about Ernestine from... Here we go. When Hendrik de Wolf left behind the life of a mercenary, he appointed his quartermaster as head of his new household. This would have drawn little comment except that his quartermaster was a woman, the soft-spoken, steely-willed Ernestine Peterhans. For more than five decades, these rooms were her unchallenged domain. Even in her 80th year, she still walked the r her rounds every day, and the servants would fall silent at the distant jingle of her keys. And then the follow-up, North Servants' Quarters. This was once the private chamber of the formidable er Ernestine Peterhans, Senchal of Brankrug. Baron Hendrick, and afterwards his son Thomas, would both descend the back stairs to visit her in person. For counsel, most said. For prayers, others insisted. Only the very foolish ever suggested there was an improper motive for their visits. All right. Um, so the shadow in the stair. I think a six nectar is manageable for us. So I'll stick this on the shelf. And... The tricky part that I have for me right now is deciding with sea stories, do I want to try and get Mrs. Kill to generate those uh, element or those uh, memories for me, or do I want to try and generate the elements of the soul using my... Um, sorry, do I want to try and generate the memories using books? I think probably... Let's take a second here. So I've got my core, my fat, and my tryst. The tryst is going to be used to upgrade sea stories. So the core with the instruments of the heart is a potential. Book of the Centipede is also. Um, Lady, a Lady Ava's repose would assume that we had a higher level of winter than I currently have. Yeah, we're actually quite short on that. Um, the berry book we sort of knew would be... I mean, the, we're assisted by the fact that... Oh, sorry, no, it's nectar, not winter. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Book of the Centipede is probably my best shot, but I think I'm short on rose skills, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, yeah, so we take it up to four. No, we can. Okay, so this would actually not be a bad time to... I think I'm going to hold off on cataloging. We will read something that gives us a confounding parable. And in this case, I'm going to try the Locksmith's Dream and Curses just to make sure that I've got this right. Um, I suspect these would give me intuitions, but I think confounding parable is the way to start here. So I've already mastered this, but I could reread it and perhaps recall a memory. And I am in the danger of uh, generating a few too many lessons learned because we will have... Um, we will have the results from our Grail text as well as the Secret Histories text when all is said and done. But uh, we do still have a little while left in um, in summer. All right, Mrs. Kill stands ready to help. You always cheer me up, she says morosely. Mrs. Kill has seen more of the world than she usually lets on. Conversations with her yield the occasional surprise. Add something to enhance Mrs. Kill's effectiveness for the day or just talk. Unlike some assistants, Mrs. Kill can make use of fabric. All right, another leaf on the Tree of Wisdom. So there are our sea stories. I guess we should put this up with the level two group. And the sunny day doesn't really help us, but we'll see what comes out the other end of, um, of all of our tasks. All right, The Rose of Nuriel, a volume of collected teachings of the Sisterhood of the Knot, that arcane contemplative order that existed in all histories, but in some was very powerful indeed. This was recorded by Nuriel and dedicated to St. Trifon. St. Trifon, Nuriel explains, performed the secret miracles in the name of she who bleeds and bears and she who opens. Thus St. Trifon opened the way to the House of the Sun. Thus St. Trifon underwent the Great Birth and Ascension to Immortality. St. Trifon began his ascension by passing the horned door. St. Trifon continued his ascension by learning the invocation theatic, which Nuriel does not here record on account of its extreme holiness. And Nuriel explains grimly to achieve the seven marks of the great birth, St. Trifon consumed those whose soul had left them, and even those in whom the soul remained. So we get a satisfaction out of that. And great signs and great scars. So the knock's going to be a little tricky for us to handle, but we should be able to sort this out. 
and I feel like I should remember which of these gives me a satisfaction. Oh, Peck Reservery. There is an image of St. Trifon, but I do not believe we have... I don't believe we, we have it yet. It would be in this... I know it's in this room, and I believe there's a second room that has it. Okay. So I sort of have my work cut out for me in terms of generating memories. There was one other thing I wanted to check, uh, and that was if there was anything that I can do with Mrs. Kill and Hart, because that might be a good use of the core here. This is too tricky. Big grail, big grail. Okay. So I really do need to find some use for the core. In fact, it might have been a little bit smarter for me to uh, take that core and bring in Mrs. Kill, although I suppose I can still use that to level up uh, sea stories or great signs and great scars. So I think probably what I'm going to wind up doing here, I'm not going to worry so much about cataloging the books. <clears throat> it's not that I don't want to do that, it's just that I have plenty of books that I want to handle. Um, and instead I will just rely on my health to sort of bring me up to where I need to be in terms of uh, reading some texts. And I think the Tans test gives me Rose, yeah. So we can take our shot with the Book of the Centipede. There it is and it can be no tizzer. Mrs. Kill, as every local gossip knows, came from France to marry Mr. Kill, but there's scant trace of the continent in her accent now. This doesn't really help me with these um, <clears throat> with these lessons, but I'm not too fussed about that. We don't need everything to, um, to work. It's more of a convenience. Use this lesson to acquire a new skill. So I'll move Watchman's Paradoxes down. So I could actually just use this satisfaction right away. Okay, The Locksmith's Dream and Curses, the fifth and final volume of Teresa Galmier's notorious work, which began as an examination of the parallels in the mystic dreams of artisans, but became an account of her own occult journey. This volume was never published, nor apparently ever written. The law goes all the way back to stone. The keys cannot be held or owned. This had, I believe, the unexpected consequence that those outside the law might hold and own them, but even they cannot keep them. And of course, a key is no more physical than a spirit, but a spirit may be housed in a body, and I have touched a key with my own hands. So the legions hold the keys. I had thought the legions only, only, uh, old and powerful transgressors of the crime of the sky. I spent $78 at... Sorry. Uh, but I begin to understand that the crime of the sky is more even than it seems, and why a twin, who unite what is not to be divided, might accept Elysian as her name. Okay, so let's take our Book of the Centipede. As always, it's just a question of trying to make the most of my elements of the soul over the course of the day. I have learned the lesson that getting sick is not sort of a license to just constantly print memories and, you know, and catalog books and all of that. It's not that I feel that, you know, I'm, I'm going to suffer some terrible consequence if I don't fix the illness. It's actually more just that that takes a lot of time, um, especially if you wind up using the sickness in terms of reading a text. Uh, you will notice that you can't really get through all that you want to do in a day if you rely too much on the health. So this is why my default has always been sort of cataloging. But I'm happy to, I'm basically happy to do other things as part of the, part of the work. Um, and it's it's just simply a recognition of the fact that I'm, I, you know, I don't always have, um, so I'm trying to think of the right way to put it, but like I don't always have, um, I don't always have simple tasks that I need to perform, or I have a lot of simple tasks and they wind up taking a lot longer than, you know, than I, I would realistically want. So, uh, but in this case, this is exactly how I would want to be using, um, using my illness. We've got a lot of books to catalog. We have little memories that we want to pick up here and there. Um, this is, uh, this works well for us. 
Now that's interesting. So it did give me the recipe for salt sign. <laughs> um, but this is actually, this is not a bad time to talk about this. So this was what was added in, I believe, the Bancroft update. Um, it could be, there, I know there was also a Cozley update, but I think that one's forthcoming. <clears throat> but essentially, as you start unlocking uh, recipes, uh, these will fill in. And then what will happen basically is you still need to know what skill to put into the, you know, into the slot. But basically you don't need to, like I have a spreadsheet which I don't use for this playthrough, but essentially you don't need to consult whatever document you've written to, to sort of learn how these things work. So uh, I think overall this is probably not a, I, I don't think this is a bad one. The only thing I'd kind of like is the option, oh there we go. I do have the option to remove it. Uh, see and choose the crafting recipes associated with the skill. Some unusual, exotic, or hidden recipes are harder to find. Click to hide this panel. Okay, that's good. Actually, that was that my one complaint on this was that I actually do kind of like seeing more of the house where I can, um, but I will definitely be making use of this later on. Although I still think if you if you are someone, so I, I know some people are kind of taking, oh, I didn't write notes as a as a flex, and I mean, hey, you know, if if that's you know, obviously trying to keep everything in in mind is not a not a not an easy feat. I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to um, to to talk that down. You know, it's an in the end playing the game the way that you want and achieving what you want is an accomplishment. Um, but the reason why I kind of referred to it as a flex and wanted to you know um, offer an alternative is that one of the things I really like about the game. The only thing is, I think there was actually somebody who made a comment uh, on that recently, and I. I was not thinking of you when I said that. I realized after the fact. So if I, I have a tendency to rub people the wrong way and I can see how that will uh, be a negative one. So please, that is, I'm, I'm not, usually if I want to be mean to someone, I will say so directly. That, that was not intended that way. So apologies if, if that did come off that way though. Um, <clears throat> but one of the things that I do like to encourage people with uh, and, and one of the reasons why I wanted to um, point out that one trend uh, is just if someone goes and, you know, let's say visits the Reddit or something like that, and they see a lot of posts like that, and they suddenly feel that this is like the the right or the pro or, you know, whatever way you would be most, uh, you know, you, you think is um, most associate or whatever you would associate with, you know, high skill, book of hours, whatever that means. Um, the one thing that I, I think might potentially be lost that is really nice about games like this, and there's a couple of other ones that, that fit that mold, is that I do rather like the fact that there's a physical artifact after me playing the game. And that's actually one reason why I really like the, the idea of note-taking. The spreadsheet isn't quite so big for me here. Like, that's more convenience. It's something that I started doing through the beta and such. But um, the idea of just having sort of these handwritten notes and seeing your thought process and being able to put it all together, you know, I'm not going to suggest that, you know, Book of Hours is such a special game to everyone that they'll, they'll take their journal while they were playing the game and sort of put that up on the mantelpiece. And yet I can, I can think of very few games where it's worth it to do that. You know, there's a lot of interesting writing and there's lots of different characters and, um, you know, and ideas that are presented inside of the books. And oftentimes the order in which you will read some of this information has a bearing on how you think about them. And so that can be the value of having it all written down in one place. And again, I, this isn't to not, I, I think maybe I'm a little oversensitive in terms of being worried that uh, people are going to take too much offense at some of these things. It's just that I have the benefit of looking at the comments, right? Um, I, I definitely get more, th more than a few of the, I'm not watching you anymore because I didn't like the way you were playing. I think with someone I said, you know, I'm playing the way that I want and they decided that it was an airport and they, they needed to announce their departure. But, um, so yeah, I mean, again, I'd probably, I'd, <laughs> these videos would be like 50% shorter if I just didn't do the caveats and, and simply said what I mean. But I don't know where I can. I'd prefer not to have people upset for no reason. But um, so like when I talk about the physical paper and that, I, I really do mean something about writing things down and, you know, having having this, this free form document for you. And um, it's, again, not a knock on Obsidian. It's not a knock on spreadsheets. There's lots of different ways of putting down the information. Um, 
but there's just something to me about playing a game about sort of creating inks and exploring a house full of interesting things and the fact that the game will reward you for thinking a little bit more deeply about some of the ideas and you will suddenly realize that there are maybe a couple of extra layers of meaning that you may not have picked up at the first time. I mean, I'm still finding this in Cultist Simulator to a certain extent. Um, <clears throat> but um, there's just something really fun about that, and it's rare. You don't get this in a lot of games. Even a game like you know, Starfield or Skyrim, as wonderful as they are, uh, and I, I would not want people like I, I I wouldn't want that to be taken as a negative of these games but you you kind of have everything available to you um, and in the end while some of the books are very interesting in Skyrim and you you can pick them up and you can read them I'm not entirely sure it's the sort of thing where you will take those details and you'll write them down and you will find out something really mind-blowing about the setting that will maybe change your interaction with another character. And so, um, but on the other hand, if you think of some old school dungeon crawlers, uh, you will have these games which would encourage you to take out some graph paper and write the, the dungeons. And that probably annoyed people a lot more than it, it benefited them. I, I wouldn't want us to, you know, I wouldn't want us to go. That, that, those games were before my time, but, you know. I hang out with the olds. <laughs> um, no, I'm, there's a GOG, GOG channel that talks a lot about these kinds of games. I, I would personally struggle with a game like that. And yet I think there's something very interesting about that because again, you have these artifacts that are created through the process of making the game. And so in the case of Book of Hours, this is actually something where I think it's, you know, there's nothing saying that you have to do it this way. And in fact, there are tools that are brought into the game to help you keep track of recipes and such. But I do still think that there's a lot of value in having that document to sort of work out the connections, maybe even just story-wise that, um, I don't know, to me, to me, it's appealing. Now that I've enraged half of the people watching, we'll continue with gameplay. The other half have left because they're bored. Uh, Mrs. Kill has seen more of the world than she usually lets on. Conversations with her yield the occasional surprise. Add something to enhance Mrs. Kill's effectiveness for the day, or just talk. So, one of the reasons why I wanted to wait with Mrs. Kill before just using that satisfaction with sea stories is that intuition... I didn't know I was going to get an intuition, obviously. But this intuition does allow me to level up sea stories, which means that I can use the satisfaction for the great signs and the great scars. And that ca in that case, the core and the tryst are spoken for. We've got all of the memories that we wanted, and then uh, we'll be working out with the, um, the Book of the Centipede for the next day. So all in all, I'd say that's a good day's work. In fact, I guess there's really no reason for me to keep talking with Mrs. Kill. Although, with my health, I should be cataloging some more books. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's baronial period, roughly the 1500s to 1700s. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. Alright, another leaf on the Tree of Wisdoms. And actually, we should put that up by the higher level ones. Okay, so let's start with the sea stories. There's always more to learn. I should be reading the descriptions of these as well. So the great signs and the great scars, some glyphs are too obscure to reside in any language, but too potent to remain unwritten. Unless I can find some heart thing for her to do, I think we'll just leave uh, Mrs. Kill. Now I have an idea of this book's nature and its contents. The humors of a gentleman, a fine piece of writing, and a very straightforward for Sky text for us to read. So we've got a lot of books to go through, <clears throat> which is good. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy about this because... I've been talking a little bit about the dilemma of deciding when to commit things to the Tree of Wisdoms, but I have so much that I can do on my own that I don't need to, like, I don't need to rush those choices. And in fact, I might be able to level a few of them up to three uh, and even another one to four 
before I make a decision to commit, which just means I can get a bit higher if I feel uh, the need to do so. Okay, so let's maybe use the correct desk for that. And then I was going to level up uh, the Great Sign and the Great Scars. There's always more to learn. Sea Story said the sea has always been the widest road. So I think we're just down to four texts at this point. What might not be a bad idea for us to do for the rest of the day is just work out where the next steps might be for uh, opening, opening different rooms. So the Rose Haunted Hall is a pretty straightforward one. Overgrown Kitchen will probably need uh, the Tissane, as will the Dim Hall. Did I say over Kitchen Garden? Yeah. And then I suppose Denzil or Mr. Kill are just a question. Well, there's a few a few ways I can handle that, but... Um, I do get more books from the Despoiled Laboratory, though. I'll worry about that later. Okay, a light in the inkwell. Musgrave, the fourth of the DeWolf line, writes tentatively about the convent of Brankrug and the legacy of the uh, sacred inks he calls in Castua Revolution. Uh, sorry, Revelatonia. Um, now, uh, first of all, I'm running out of room. I don't believe we have a bust from Musgrave yet. So we've got Valentine. Actually, it says sixth, so I probably should have moved him already. Valentine de Wolf, sixth Baron Brankrug, known for his eccentricities. In the sky, he sought his friends, an inscription reads. Yeah, so we've got Walter. Um, grave that I was interested in. Although I suppose one thing I can do is move one of the other busts. Huh. I thought we had a couple more of these, but... Now... Funnily enough, um, I've actually had a little trouble... Actually, you know what? I'm going to put Christopher back. <clears throat> In my YouTube playthrough, I've actually had a little trouble finding a spot for... Not Christopher, what am I saying? Fraser. Um, oh, interesting. I can't put him back. Oh, yes, I can. All right, there is Musgrave. Never mind. So it did say Musgrave fourth. Yes. Oh, uh, well, it says fourth of the DeWolf line, though. I'm going to still take that as fourth, but... All right, that was fun. Um, catalog a Curia period book. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's Curia period, roughly the 1700s to 1800s. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. And turns out I do have space for Fraser. Fraser Strathcoin. This bees is bust is shaped from beeswax. Careful with it. But yeah. So one um, one hope would be so with the despoiled laboratory, <clears throat> if I can get um, Denzel in. That's uh, six forge that I can open that with and gain some books. And if I don't open it, um, Mrs. Kill can gain access to a few other rooms, but ones that I don't believe have books in them. On the white, Solomon Husher writes, perhaps allegorically, of winter and its long, slow, doomed romance with the sun. The epigraph is sunset at noon. And I need to figure out a better filing system. 
Now these I'm not expecting to be able to read. This book was probably written around the time of Hush House's dawn period, sometime before the end of the first millennium commonly reckoned. If I examine it, I can learn more about what knowledge it might contain. And that should be... The Book of the Centipede. In the mid-1860s, one Madame Yi presented an entertainment based she claimed on this book. The Centipede has always found her way into the dark places. When she was punished for it, she reacted badly in the Mansus, as in Maya. The river runs through the sands out of myth and into legend. The painted river runs the other way. One is barred to the Centipede now, but she finds ways back in sometimes. So we got another intuition for that, and sand stories. So that's one we should just be able to commit right away. <clears throat> and I have been working on the assumption that this is the, nope, not this one. Um, I had an intuition pile somewhere. I had a guess that this was the intuition group. Okay, so this is actually quite good for us because we are not at a point, so if we were worried about Numa, we're at a point where we have um, all of our lessons taken care of <clears throat> and none of them are, uh, like none of them are, are waiting for that season. So in this case, it might not be a bad idea for me to catalog some of the, uh, some of the books that I might want to read right away. So Humors of a Gentleman, I think would be top of the list there. Interesting. Nix Abelix, a grim treatise on those feasts that occur and those feasts that are not to be witnessed. So this is one in a language I can't read. Okay, I tried to sort of do that with this collection here. So I'm going to shuffle these off a little bit to the side. So 10's a bit much to ask. I feel like with my winter... Oh yeah, it's a snowy day that I'm waiting for, so that is going to be too much to ask. But Shadow in the Stair, I feel like we should be able to manage that with Rights in the Root. Oh, it actually better still drums it. Nope, Rights in the Roots still handles it. So with that, actually, hang on, that's tougher than I thought. So Rights in the Roots with Heart. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, no, no, we've got this. So Rights of the Roots with Heart and the Mortar and Pestle is four, and then we add a Memory and that's six. So I'm actually going to put that right near the front. <coughs> Instruments of the heart, we've got two for the core. Or sir, no, drums and dances. So we've got five, and then we, I guess we have seven. Yeah. So we're waiting on a storm on that one. Um, I don't know what makes me think I'm going to be able to read this one on time. And then I should probably keep an eye on any kind of uh, heavier grail tech. Well, grail or moon, really, uh, because of my desires and dissolutions. I think I have a tendency to just sort of brush those off to the side because uh, in my other playthrough I find them challenging, but I think I can probably handle a few a few more. should probably put the few scene texts with... Oh, okay, well, never mind. You're killing me. All right, well, we'll work that out at another time. Um, I do need to go, um, but I'm reasonably happy with where we're wrapping this up anyway. Like I said, we've got all of the lessons that we need. In terms of just like gimmies, uh, Humors of a Gentleman and Shadow in this. Actually, Humors of a Gentleman is a little trickier than it seems, I think, because Drums and Dances isn't a sky. Um, uh, that's not a sky one. Um, <clears throat> and I don't have the Faust to kick around with it, but I just need the storm memory and we should be good there. So Humors of a Gentleman and Shadow in the Stair are straightforward. Instruments of the Heart is waiting on weather, as is Lady Ava's Repose. 
the berry book i think we just need to get a little lucky and then the rest is going to involve oh wait i do have faust what am i talking about uh the rose of wasnai i think we're we're gonna have to get fancy so f two faust two from memory would be four we've got the mirror scope which is five yeah and there wouldn't be a higher level okay so that'll be one that i need to to spend some time thinking about but again i'm i'm happy to uh i'm happy to sort of play around a little bit with um with some of the uh basically like once once all the cataloging is done once we're back to opening rooms and such uh, I don't mind playing around with some some chances in terms of memories and such. There's still lots of things for me to do. And I do eventually want to read more of the descriptions of the paintings and such. That would normally be a good thing to use my... Um, actually, I guess I can't because Consider wouldn't allow me to use an afflicted... Um, Afflicted, afflicted element of the soul. But again, just because I've been a little slow to commit things to the Tree of Wisdoms, I... Um, you know, I, I, uh, it feels like a big cost to, uh, to just do this so I can read something, but we'll, we'll handle it. We'll definitely get on that, um, later on in the day. Anyways, like I said, I need to go, um, and I'm six minutes over anyway. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, next episode will be on Wednesday and there might be a little bit of a gap, uh, in terms of me recording these episodes, but I should have a pretty good idea of where we're at because of this organizing that we did. Talk to you later. Take care.